So until a year and a half ago, I was completely inexperienced on fishing. I fished when I was about eight, but none of my family fished, so it wasn't something I was super into despite the fact that I grew up in the country. Jimmy, on the other hand, has been fishing his whole life. Um, he comes from a family of fishermen. They all do this together and separately. So I literally, from then to now, I've learned everything that I know. Needless to say, you've probably seen our other videos. Um, when we're in a group of fishermen, me and Jimmy stand out. Uh, because we do have a lot of knowledge on how to fish properly. Even since we got started, we've had many comments from people saying that the fish that we're fishing for, they've gone out fishing for for years and never been able to successfully catch them where we're mutually fishing. So I believe that goes back to just a lack of knowledge. If you are an experienced fisherman, I want you to go to this point in the video so that you can skip through all the beginner stuff that we're about to cover. Um, this is designed for literally someone who has never fished before. So again, go to this point. If you're experienced or intermediate fisherman, just skip ahead to watch us catch some fish. Um, but for you guys that have literally never done this before, we're gonna go from start to finish. If you're like me a year and a half ago where I literally had no idea how to rig, if you even know what that means, I had no idea what kind of line to get, what kind of lures to get, what kind of hooks to get. I, I weights, no clue. So we're literally gonna cover this video um, for the whole beginning half uh, for brand new fishermen just trying to understand where to go and what to do. So let's go ahead and get started. So our favorite sort of to get our fishing gear at, or our tackle is what they call it, um, would be Cabela's followed by Academy and then thirdly by Walmart. We're going to go ahead and go to Walmart because it's a little less um, overwhelming store to purchase your tackle if you've never done this before. So we're going to go ahead and show you there uh, the sizes we're going to use for the particular fish you're fishing. Uh, the kind of line you need, the weights you need, the swivels you need, and the hooks you need, uh, as well as, in some cases, uh, the lures. So we're gonna head over there and show you guys. This is what a to shopping get. list cheat sheet. So if you want to just take a screenshot of this, it'll make shopping a little bit easier. We're just shopping over here at the Walmart's. The Walmart's. <laughs> So we have just made it to the fishing aisle and Jimmy is about to show you what to get. So for largemouth bass fishing, I usually either use, I mainly use live bait. I like to use minnows, preferably the larger you can get the better. Um, sometimes the large ones are hard to get. But usually my rig when I'm fishing for largemouth bass um, using minnows is I have a weight, a swivel, and usually a leader that's two to three feet um, long, I use... Uh, and just so you know, a leader is, what that means is it's a, a distance of line, so it's a distance of fishing line that you put between the swivel and the hook. Yeah, I would typically, for a largemouth bass setup, I would use swivels about this size, which is a size five. Um, you can go a little smaller, a little bigger, and these hooks here, which is a size four, it's about the right size for a large minnow, um, and three quarter ounce weights. You can go a little lighter also if you wanted to, more like a half ounce size weight. So yeah, put on an egg sinker, a swivel, and then a piece, a leader line that's probably two or three feet long hook. And then when I when I bait my minnows, I stick the hook behind the dorsal fin in the top. Now we're going to head to the lake in just a while and we're going to show you exactly how that setup looks and how we assemble it just so you're not freaking out right now. Um, we're going to show you how to do that. And I pretty much do the same exact rig for a striper. Uh, you might, if you can get bigger baits like perch or large shad then you'd obviously use like larger hooks and stuff. So all these fish that we're describing obviously they don't sell those at Walmart or Academy. 
um, what we're describing is going to be sold at a bait shop. So there's always bait shops around lakes. You can literally just Google a bait shop to be able to find that. The only thing in addition you're going to need is a bait bucket. Um, again, sold at the bait shop. It's like you can just ask them for a bait bucket and they'll be able to advise you on what to get. One of the lures that I really like to use for striper and largemouth bass, I've used a lot of lures. Um, this one just seems to always work really well for me. It's the 360 GT swim bait. Um, this is not the size I use. I use the one size larger than this. They have three sizes, like really big, medium, and small. This is the small one, but that's all they carry here. You can get those at Academy, but that's what I like to use for it. We've caught so many bass, stripers and large mouths on those medium or large GTs. They always say, you'll hear a line that's common for fishermen, which is bait to size. If you're trying to catch a monster, you wanna go with the largest ones, wow. If you're trying to get a regular size one, you wanna go with the medium ones. Um, and what bait to size means is basically the larger the lure, the larger the fish is going to be that you catch it. If you use the medium size, you'll catch more fish, but if you use the larger size, you'll catch bigger fish. So it's just kind of dependent on what you're looking for. Sound good? Okay, so one thing you're gonna notice, and this is sort of like kind of a joke with the more experienced fishermen, which I picked up on very quickly. Um, while you're at Walmart, I swear, if you're trying to catch a legitimate hook, I know that there are instances where freaky thing happens, and I'll describe some of those in the future, but you don't need to pick up worms and you don't need to pick up bobbers. There are definitely instances where bobbers come in handy, and I'll give you an example. Um, one time we were uh, having a, we were getting skunked one day, and what skunked means is like basically we weren't catching any fish. So Jimmy throws um, a perch onto a large bobber and throws it out to see if we could catch a striper on it. And we caught this whale of a catfish, which is, first of all, catfish never hit the top. Like, it's incredibly unusual. Second of all, it was just really crazy to have a bobber. But what we're trying to teach you is the generic across the board. Freaky things do happen, but we're teaching you, like, every time you go to fish, we want you to catch a fish, so we're teaching you the absolute basics. So fishing line size, it's definitely variable. Um, most fishing line will just work. <laughs> Uh, I usually try to stay away from lighter lines, like 8 pound is probably the lightest I would go for, like cross bass fishing. Um, typically I use about 10 pound to 12 pound line. Um, for cat fishing, uh, I like to, I'll use 20 pound line. I'll rock some 20 for cat fishing, but typically I usually just use 10 or 12 Usually 10 pound line for like bass fishing and stuff like that is an ideal weight. Um, but yeah, 20 pound line for catfishing, 20 pound line for carp. Do you have a preference in color? Um, Does it matter? It doesn't really matter, but yeah, I mean, I like to use this kind of greenish stuff. For, because you're fishing lakes mostly. Okay, so we are down at Whitney, Texas. Um, we went to the bait shop to get minnows. So they usually come in a bag kind of like this or whatever. These are large minnows because we're trying to catch larger um, bass on them. So uh, yeah, when you're going to a bait shop, basically again, the two things you're gonna need is they're gonna give it to you in a bag, but you have to keep them aerated. So if you're fishing with minnows um, for bass fishing, you want to get a bait bucket to put them in once you get to the water. Um, basically the bait bucket has to continue to be aerated so if you have the minnows in there the easiest way to handle that is to put the minnow bucket into the water make sure that the top is sealed there's like a lid on the bait bucket so make sure that the top is sealed and then drop them into the water and just leave them there because the lake or the river already has aerated water in it if you do not do that and you just leave them in the bait bucket um, eventually they will die fairly quickly kind of depending on the size of the bucket and the size of the fish but they are going to die in the bucket if you don't keep it in aer aerated water. So that is what we're headed to do now is we are headed over to our spot and we're going to get the minnows in the bucket and everything rigged up. We have like one dozen large minnows and one dozen medium minnows because we got a set of medium for free because we bought so many large minnows recently. So yeah, that's what they look like. <laughs> bait bucket we bought it at a bait shop a little while back um, basically you open this up uh, and you're gonna put these here fishes into here that is the plan open the bag up. Hold up. actually you know what? I'm just gonna tear it 
I just ripped a hole in that there bag. Okay, and you're gonna put your fishes into the bait bucket. Right. And that's them being in. So again, one thing you wanna be cautious of is this thing has to lock down. If it doesn't lock down, you can lose all your bait, which you will be super disappointed on. So we're gonna see that click sound. That means it's locked in. I'm gonna kind of tug on it. Looks like it's good to go. All right, and then this rope is to make sure you can kind of tie them off to a rock or something. Um, it's, it's a pretty long rope. So you tie them off to a rock or something to make sure that you don't lose your bait bucket in the water. All right, we're headed we just down got to the spot behind the dam and it looks like they just let out water pretty recently so it is looking really good for fishing today we are super stoked okay so we are at Whitney we are behind the dam right there um, we don't fish this spot a whole whole lot because there's usually a lot of people out here but it is about 3 50 in the afternoon nobody is here so we're gonna give it a whack um, things are always changing today for example last time we were out here this water was moving, um, it was super low, super slow moving. As you can see, today is a little wild, but we're gonna give it a whack and just see how this so goes. Real quick, I just wanna show you guys how we do our knots. Um, the same knot is gonna go between the swivel and the hook, and of course, it's gonna be the one that you do on the hook. So just across the board, this is how you knot everything. If you wanna come get a close up. So we're gonna take this, put it through the hole, what it right then you're gonna go around 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 keep just keep going there we go all right so that's about good we're gonna go through this hole up here through the the string hole and then back through the other hole right there oops through the string hole and then it did it didn't want to stay back through the hole so give me one second <laughs> back through the hole okay Pull it tight. It should look like this when you're done. It should look like this when you're done. We're gonna go ahead and clip it. And you wanna get it kinda as close, but not within reason. So I'm gonna clip it about right there. And then we'll be done with that first knot. And that's how exactly you attach all the different things together. exact size we use of these 360 GTs. These are our absolute favorite swim bait. Um, that's the size right there. You can find these at Academy or Cabela's. We usually buy them at Academy because we have one a little closer to us. Um, so that's what you're looking for. Sometimes they have gold flex, sometimes they have black flex, sometimes they have silver flex I believe. Um, it doesn't really matter flex color. We just personally, because of the lakes we're fishing in, these are more the color of the local uh, bait fish. So we use the silver ones always, despite whatever color the flex are, we'll use it. So. Way higher than we expected. I've been fishing for about three minutes. This is the first fish to hit. It's a beautiful striper. He's undersized, but it's been about three minutes, so I'm a happy camper. Uh, we basically decided where the water was moving slow, I decided to start casting it that direction. So this is day, this is three minutes into day one, and I'd say it's going pretty good so far. Let's catch more fish. We've already described to you about how long the leader is, the size of hook, the size of weight. Let's just show them the rigging. So here's Well, that's kind of a large swivel, but we were... Okay. Yeah, we were we still had our ocean swivel. So just look at what we did, not the sizing, because we already told you what sizing to use. But there's your weight that's connected to the swivel. The swivel then connects to the leader, which is this line. And we told you we're going to do that. And then you're gonna attach your hook. And now Jimmy's gonna show you how we put our minnows on. That's right behind his fin. Not too deep into his body because you can penetrate organs and at that, in that instance, they're going to die faster. So that's how we're linking him up and we're about to toss him into the slower water over here in the corner. Okay. Jimmy had passed him. Okay, we got a catfish. We were uh, tossing out over here. So he's reeling it All in right, right now. I, we don't know. And it's a something. Small bass. Small cat, okay. Small bass. Small bass, okay. Wow. Okay. Wow. <laughs> Get it up, babe. Looks like a large mouth. Is it a large mouth? Yeah, it's dark. <laughs> We're kind of high up, you can't already tell. And we just grab the line. 
All right, pretty boy. Is this your first largemouth? For this the year? Season, yeah. yeah, so this year, this is his first largemouth he's caught. How big do you think it is? Just speculation. That's a pretty, pretty bass. Really, it's like a 12 or 13 inch. 12 or 13. So, just so you know, largemouths, they have to be 14 to keep. Is that right? Yeah, cats are 12, largemouths are 14, striper 18. So, he's pretty though. He's a good he's boy. Pretty. We'll go get him measured. Um, we keep a measuring tape, literally like a spooling measuring tape in our tackle box. So we're just gonna go measure him out and see if we're allowed to keep him. We bought a uh, measuring tape at a tack, uh, bait shop, obviously in Port Aransas. Um, but you can buy these anywhere and it just stretches out. Uh, we're gonna measure this fish real quick. Jimmy, you wanna set him down and measure him? Or do you want me to measure him? Okay, here we go. So you go from here. Uh, can you hold the end? Or that. Okay. So you're gonna go from the top of his mouth to the end of his tail to measure him like that. So this one is actually keeper size because he's measuring 15 inches to the end of his tail. So they have to be 14 plus, so it's actually allowed to keep to eat if you want to keep to eat. Some people just throw them back, but we typically will eat them if they're of size. Um, I'm not sure if we're gonna eat this guy or not uh, because he is kind of small, but that's what we're looking at. I wanna show him for a second, is that okay? That's a real pretty boy. Look at that fish. Jimmy's bass. First largemouth of the year. Sweet. Yay, Jimmy.